There we go. Okay, so this little girl, 10-year-old girl, had a Q-tip injury. Let's see if we can get you a better picture there. You can see with the Q-tip, she's done a complete perforation of her eardrum. Now, we are not in focus on the camera yet. Let's get in focus. There we go. So you can see the malleus almost looks like it's been, uh, it, it almost looks like it's a vascular. But uh, she's lost pretty much her whole drum here. So you can, uh, a lot of times when somebody does a perforation with a Q-tip, I'll do a paper patch procedure. But in this case, okay, let's have injection. And we're going to inject. And so what we're going to look for is here's bony cartilaginous junction. So this is all, of course, skin down in the bone. So we're going to go down to the bony cartilaginous junction here and inject. And I've actually already injected out a little bit laterally and posteriorly before we even started. So we're going to inject. And as we inject, we're going to watch. There we go. You can see it kind of lifting up a little bit. More importantly, what I like to watch is watch. There's these little blood vessels down here. And you can actually watch those blood vessels blanch. And I think that's the most important. All right. There we go. Now we're just going to clean up the canal a little bit. So we're going to do pretty much a straightforward lateral surface grafting technique. She's got a little bit of junk up here, which we'll clean out. Just so we can make sure we can see a little bit better. So this is a healthy ear up until the time when she stuck a Q-tip in there. Now she's got pretty much a full conductive loss in this ear as well. There we go. Okay, Charlene, let's have now curved beaver blade. So we're going to make our vascular strip incisions first. And what we'll do is, uh, if you don't have that, I'll take a number two knife. No, no, I wanted uh, the uh, curved beaver blade or a number two knife. Okay. So now here's the annulus. The annulus is going to kind of come right along here. So in lateral, in a medial surface graft, you want more of the this uh, vascular strip to be preserved. In a lateral surface graft, we don't. We want a long vascular strip. So we're going to come down here just a couple of millimeters away from the annulus. We're going to make our incision here. And this is a number two knife. Tell me when you have if you have it. Curved beaver. Okay, so with this two knife, the idea is that you're crushing to stop the blood from bleeding. And theoretically crushing the blood vessels is the theory behind this. Now, does that work? Well, you can make your own assessment here. I actually don't normally use this. But we're having trouble finding our curved beaver blade. We have it, uh-huh. So here's our curved beaver blade. Nope, this is a straight sickle knife. Suction, please. Yes, that's it. Okay. And let's see here. Let's have the number two knife back, please. I want to make sure we've got this actually all of this cut Put across here and across there it goes now we're sure that it's uh, call across okay number one knife please or the uh, uh, straight beaver blade let's have straight beaver blade So now we're just going to come down and actually make our 12 o'clock cut. And what we want to do is undermine the skin here. What I mean by that is we're coming all the way out the bony canal. But we don't want to. We don't want to. Don't have to cut all the way out to there. Now we're going to come another cut inferiorly. Now, some people will go ahead and make the cut around here. I usually wait till afterwards. Uh, let me have a beaver or a weapon, please. Now, the other thing you can do is if you're not sure about your cuts, and this is you can do this if you want to, but you don't have to. Something Jim Sheehy was really keen on doing, and that is that you can actually back elevate then the vascular strip to make sure that you've got it completely elevated and all of your cuts 
are complete. And you can see how this vascular strip now is coming up. And that's something that you don't have to do, but it's kind of nice. You can make sure that's all cut there. Here we are, Charlene. Now we're going to go post auricular. So we're just going to, let me wait till we get the camera focused here just a little bit. Let me have a wet ray tech, please, Charlene. Now, when we make our post auricular incision, uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to make sure that our um, that we know exactly where our mastoid tip is. And so I always put my finger down here on the mastoid tip with the theory being that I'm not going to cut my own finger. So there we see that. All right, now, it's going to come now. There's different ways you can make this. You know, here's the crease right here. Some people like to go in the crease. I go a little bit behind the crease, and I don't think that's so important of exactly where it is. But you can see I just keep my finger right here on the mat and still tip. Make sure I don't cut my finger. And then we'll just come right through this tissue as we're lifting up the ear. And down to our temporalis. Come forward just a little bit here. Again, there's mastoid tip. Now here's linea temporalis. We can just slide right down across and then make our incision down behind the ear canal. There we are, Charlene. Now let's have the bovie, please. Now I injected before we did any of this, and that's why you can see here there's very little bleeding that's going on. Just stop any little oozing that may be starting in here. There we go. Let's just stop some bleeding here. Okay, let's have the retractor now, please. Self-retaining retractor. A big one, please. I can just open this up. Now, let's go back to the microscope. We'll get the graft actually under the microscope and do the rest of this under the microscope. You should get a little bit better picture here. I don't normally do it this way, but I think it'll just be easier for you to see kind of what we're doing here. We have a suction please, Charlene. And Bovie, please. Jim, you want to tell me when we're back on the microscope? Okay, pick up some scissors, please. Now, one of the things we know with this linea temporalis is always thick right in this area here. So what we want to try and do is we want to try and go above that area. Of course, we have this little areolar tissue here, and lift that, get that lifted up. Now, the beauty of saving this is later on, if you ever have to do a revision, hopefully this girl will never need one, but in cases of cholesteatoma, I'm much more concerned about. Okay, Charlene, your retractor, please. If you ever have to do a revision, you usually will have still some tissue there. Okay, so we're just going to lift that up. Now then, let's have a knife, please. Okay, so we're going to go up just a little bit here into this area right about here and get right down through our fascia. There we are, Charlene. Hold this, please, now. So now we can just come right through the fascia here. There's the muscle. And the nice thing about young people is they have very nice tissue planes. All right, I just come here so you can see a little bit better, but take a relatively good sized piece of fascia here. I see I got a little muscle in there, which, Charlene, come up, please. There we go. Okay, come on out. Now, we're going to put this on the block. Charlene, let me have the block, please. Now, you'll see that there's some little, here's the fascia on this side. 
we have some skin and such here. Now Charlene's actually going to take that and she's going to work this, work her magic. And basically we're going to scrape it with the back handle here. You can see how the fat comes off. And she's going to work some magic back there and thin it out. And you'll see we're going to get a nice piece of fascia here in just a minute. So I'm going to give that to Charlene. Okay, Charlene, now let's have a limpered elevator, please. Again, usually we do all this without the mic or without the microscope, but so I have to come up first. Now we're going to slide down. There's our spine of Henley. Actually, open this up. There we go. Get suction, please. I notice how this vascular strip. Let me have five suction, please. This vascular strip is already coming up because they elevated it. And usually what happens is where the vascular strip tears is where the little pieces down here, you can see now look at that, see how that's already pulled up there. It's usually these little pieces that get adherent down in here. Okay, let's have the bovie please. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open this up just a little bit right here, just to free this up. And then we're also going to open this up. This is tethering us here. Notice we don't have to open the skin incision more. We can actually undermine a little bit. Facial is going to be right down in there, lower. By keeping our finger on the mastoid tip here, we prevent ourselves from getting down into that area. Let me have pickups, please, and straight beaver blade. Now we're going to take our vascular strip here, straight beaver blade. So we've got a nice cut superiorly. Charlene, there's actually two beaver blade handles, so you can keep it on there. Yeah. Okay. There's our vascular strip. Now it's up. And we can now take and put it within our retractor. There we go. Suction left. There's our skin. Now, next step, with, you can see this is a total perforation of the drum. I mean, there's just nothing there. There's just a little strip of annulus. And this is, I think, where doing a lateral surface graft is best. Um, you could do a medial if you wanted to, but uh, and I, I was actually trained on doing medial surface grafts, but I like the lateral much better, especially for this condition. Let's have a straight beaver blade now. Okay, so now normally we're going to come across in the bony cartilaginous junction here. Now in children, a little higher power, a little higher than what I normally do. Here's where the bony cartilaginous junction is, is right here. In children, a lot of times we'll come up a little bit higher than that because Sometimes they're, especially this girl's 10, so it's not quite as important here. But in the little bitty kids when you're doing this, you got to be careful because they will actually have, uh, a, their bone is not completely um, uh, solidified and still cartilage a lot of times. So we're actually going to take a little bit of the cartilage right here. And there's different ways to do this. I mean, some people will actually go medial and that back elevate it, and you can do that, and that works. Or... What most of us do will come here. Let's see now. See, we got a little piece of skin here. We got to get that out of there. What most of us will do is actually come right down this way. Let's just cut this little piece of cartilage out of here. There it goes. Got to get down to the bone here. There's our bone. And our bone across here. Now if there's any burning desires or questions that anybody has, uh, you can, I guess I can't hear you. Normally we have a two-way conversation. But if you have a significant question that you want to ask, they could call over and ask us the question. I could address that. So Call now. With, if you call within the next five minutes, We'll throw in as a bonus, at no extra cost, Dr. Slattery's commentary on Meniere's disease. Yes, yes, you too can have Meniere's disease update. Sorry, without any conversation, it's a little lonely over here. Okay, weapon please. For a limited time only. All right, so now we've got, you can, here's the cartilage. Here's your bony cartilaginous junction, you can see that. Now, spine of Henley. We don't have a significant spine of him, or not, I'm sorry, here's spine of Henley, but uh, tympanal squamous suture line. We don't have a significant tympanal squamous suture line, which is actually a, um, is in some respects helpful. 
And what I find is in some of these cases, when you start doing this, there are some cases that just have a significant spine or uh, tympano squamous suture line that it's really nice to get that out of there. And one of the things I will do is even if I'm doing a, like if this case was a small posterior perforation, I would actually consider doing a canal plasty regardless of the fact that I'm doing a medial surface graft. How do you do that? And why would you do that? The reason you do that is remember that they call this chronic otitis medium. The word chronic is in there for a reason. Now this little girl is a little bit different. This is a traumatic perforation. But in many of these cases, of course, you've got a chronic infection. Uh, you've got cholesteatoma, smaller weapon now. And for that reason, you know that you're going to be back in here again and again and again. Okay, or potentially having to put tubes in or, you know, something. And so one of the things I like to do, so let's say we were going to do that in this case, what would I do? What I would do is I'd actually put this down. We can put a little piece of protector in here, a little piece of silastic. Do you have a little piece of silastic, Charlene, or something we could just show them for a protector? You have what? Yeah, let's just have a little protector. We'll just show them what, that's, what we do here. So we just put this down, and I'll just show you. Charlene's cutting a little piece of tissue or material right now. And what we'll do here, this is a neat little technique, and I do this pretty much for almost every ear case I do. Because this bony ridge right here gets in the way. So what you can do is put this in place, and then take your drill and drill down this groove. Which we're going to drill down this groove after we take the skin out. But I just want to show you, let me have the bovie while we're waiting. Now the other thing I like to do is take out some of the soft tissue right here. This also helps open up the canal. Narrow elevator, please, while we're waiting. See, that's all bone up there, and this is just some soft tissue. And if you take this out of the way, it really helps a lot. There we go. Okay. Yeah, the protector, Charlene? Uh-huh. I'll show you here. This is just beautiful anatomy. So here we go. So here's a protector. So see, you can put this in here. This is just a piece of Dexon foil, the foil for the suture. You just put this in here, see how it protects the skin. Now you can drill this down with your drill without any problem. And that's just the, we won't do it in this case, but that just gives you an idea. Let me have a three suction now, please. Table towards me, please. That's good. Again, I'm a little higher power. And Jim, if you would just keep an eye to make sure we're keep on the screen. or uh, If you guys notice we're off the screen, please say so. We've got a couple... Or a circulating nurse and a visitor in here. Okay, let me have the weapon now. Now here's the, this is the important part. What we need to do now is keep the annulus down. I see here's the annulus right here. Now we're separating the drum remnant. Okay? So there's, the annulus is down. We're down into the drum remnant here. Let me see if I can show that to you a little bit better. Here's the, here's the fibrous annulus. This is actually the fibrous drum. Let's see here in the right plane. Make sure we keep that annulus down here. Make sure we're not pulling that up. So here's one place we can find the annulus is down here. Let's see, I'm afraid we might be, no, that's okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, her annulus is kind of petering out there. So we're going to come, the other way to find the annulus is up here superiorly. What we're going to do first is just separate this drum layer. So again, the idea is we want to get the squamous epithelium out. And at the same time, keep getting the squamous epithelium out, keep the fibrous layer down. Cups, please, now. A little skin right here. We want to separate that. That way. There we go. Okay. Now across the top here, what we're going to do is lift off the skin up off the malleus here. Let's make sure we got it all the way down. Table away now, please. That's good. Okay, Charlene. Let me see the weapon again, please. I make sure our skin's all the way down to the annulus here in front. And it appears there we are right there. Good, good, good. Okay, now let's have the cups, please. 
Now you can see there's our skin. So skin up over the malleus. Okay, there's our anterior perforation. So what we're going to do is lift this up. As we lift it up, you can actually find the anus. Now here's the top of the malleus right there. So we're going to pull this down off the tip of the malleus. There it goes. Okay, and then across the front here, we need to find the annulus in the front. There's the annulus. Let's see here, why is that? There's the annulus right there, there we go. Now this is pulling down and the annulus is still down. See, there's our annulus right up there. But she just does not have a very well-defined annulus. There's skin there. We want to make sure we get this skin down. Now see, there's a little skin underneath the malleus there, which we're going to have to get out in a few minutes. But we'll come back and deal with that in just a minute. Let's have the weapon now, please. She's just got a little bitty annulus here. That's okay. So we're going to come around the annulus here, right on top of the annulus. So we're coming around. Coming around. Getting the skin to actually come down off the annulus is the idea. Let's look here and see what we've got. So here's the annulus here. So it's kind of petering out a little bit. There's a little skin that's left on it. Let's get that out. There's probably a little skin left there. I need to make sure we get that off. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so I think we had a little trouble with that annulus right down in fairly. Now let's see if we got all the skin off now. Do we have it all off of here? Cups, please. Take all of our skin out now. Still a little bit right there. It's still attached. That is part of the annulus right there. So we want to leave that down. Let's get the rest of this off. Okay. Uh, look at that. Little tympanal sclerosis on the tip down there. That's what that was. This is plugged now, Charlene. And I need Bellucci's, please. Now, this is actually at a much higher power than what I think it's helpful so you can actually see what we're doing here. Okay, we're going to pass now the skin off. Cups, please. Let's see here, that's maybe a little scar band up front. Get that off. There we are, Charlene, take that please. There's our skin. Got it? Okay. Okay, now then, let's have the drill. Now we're looking right down the eustachian tube here. There's the eustachian tube. Carotid artery is going to be right underneath this white part right here. There is bone there, which is good. Okay. Now then, go ahead and, go ahead and start our drilling. Now when we do our drilling, the first thing we want to do is just take down that spine of Henley a little bit, just flatten it down just a bit. The second thing we're going to do is come up here superiorly. Okay, let's have the drill in water, please. Okay, so we'll just take this down just a little bit. This just helps with visualization as we're drilling here. That looks good. Now then, the next thing we're going to do is drill superiorly. Just take out this tympanal squamous suture line, and then inferiorly. The idea is that we're doing our little Mickey Mouse ears, if you've heard about that. So we'll do a little Mickey Mouse. Say there's our Mickey Mouse, top one and the bottom one. And then we can just kind of come across the middle as we bring this down. The whole time we're doing this, we're looking for the temporal mandibular joint. Now, one of the things with this cartilage, see we can actually drill down some of this cartilage here, and you can see there's actually bone underneath it. See there's actually bone underneath the cartilage. So this is going to help our canal get a little bit bigger. Help with visualization here. Charlene, do not cut the skin. I'll cut it, please. Now 
Now we gotta be careful as we come down here that we don't hit the malleus. Hit it off. Now table towards me, please. That's good. Now the facial nerve can come up in this area here, posterior inferior. Drill on. That's one thing we gotta be careful of. So as we're drilling down here, we're actually drilling in the direction of the facial. We usually don't have to drill out a whole lot posteriorly. It's more just directly inferiorly. Okay, off. Let's have a three diamond now, please. See, this is, I think this was, this is actually, I think that's some, that may be the annulus, but I can't tell, so we're actually gonna take that out. So you got some fibrous tissue there. What's that? No, I need a three. Let me have the two till you get it. This is a three. Draw a line. Okay, so what we're going to do is just kind of smooth this out posteriorly here. Again, because the facial nerve's down here, we want to drill in the direction of the facial nerve. We're just going to flatten this area out down here. And again, I think a good canalplasty helps with visualization. There's a little, there's where the TMJ is. There's a little opening right there in TMJ. Be careful of that. Just going to drill right down here to the annulus here. Off. Smaller suction irrigator now, please. Table away a little bit, please. Thank you. That's good. Now, we still, what we, the idea is you want to be able to see the entire annulus at, in one picture. Drill on now, please. So as we come down here, we're going to we try and just drill this down gently. The idea is as we look in here, we should be able to see everything at one shot. Again, we've got to be very careful that we don't hit the malleus as we're doing this sort of drilling. We want to stay lateral to it and then get this opened up and then we can come a little bit more closer to it. You can see how much bone there can be in here sometimes. There can actually be quite a bit of bone overriding this. Here, getting close to needing our two diamond next. Off. Let's have a two now. You can see we can pretty much see now the whole annulus, but we need to get down a little bit closer here. Okay, drill on, and just go by by making subsequent smaller. Diamond drill bits, it'll help us open this up. And the other thing I like to do is create kind of a ledge anteriorly that will allow then the drill or the uh, graft to kind of sit up here. It also helps us with our anterior angle. Off. Table towards me now, please. It's good, right there. Okay, drill line. Just kind of open this up a little bit. You see we've kind of got an anterior ledge here. We're actually going to take a smaller diamond in just a minute as soon as Charlene has that off. Now we got to come up here over the malleus. Drill line. So we want to just get this Cleaned out a little bit here, just so our graph lays nice and flat in there, off. 
Okay, let's have it in a smaller diamond, please. We're just going to create just a little bit. Oh, Linda, you know what? We forgot our little uh, matrix in here. Uh, drill line. So again, I just want to drill just a little bit more in front of the annulus here. And this will just create a ledge that our graft will hang on. Oh my goodness, You're somebody's talking about your screen. Off. Off, it's, let's see here. Is that better? There we go. Okay, so we have now a little ledge that I've just drilled right across here. Okay, there we go. Take that, please. Now, let me have a three diamond. There's a little bump right here I just want to get out. And then I think we're done drilling. Drill line. And I use a diamond for these because sometimes you can get into air cells. Again, especially in somebody who's a traumatic perforation. Be able to see very nicely in here. There we go. Okay, good. All right, off. Now then, let's have a uh, let's have a big suction. Let's have a squirt. And we're just going to make sure we get all this bone dust out of here now. So Linda, I'm assuming I can hear you, but I can't hear what everybody they're saying across the street. So that's right, because I have a microphone in the control room. Okay, that explains it. Okay, squirt again, please. So just trying to get all this bone dust out of here. We're gonna go back and look at this. I don't think I think this is annulus here, but again, I want to take a closer look. Let's get all this out of here. Okay, Charlene, now. Yeah, see there's some little blood clots in there. Let's have now a three suction. And let's have a rosin, please. Okay. Now, one of the things we want to do is just assess our drum mobility, and you can see it moves very nicely. So that works well. Port of Tempani's in place. No reason to mess with that at all. There's really no skin. I think we got all the skin out from underneath the malleus here. I think we're doing okay there. Okay. Let's look around here. Now, let's have the weapon, please. Now, one of the things we want to do... Yeah, see, this is annulus right here. That is actually annulus there. That's what that is. So we tore... There's a little bit of lost annulus here, but now we want to take this as we come around, to make sure we get all the squamous epithelium off of this. If you don't have all the epithelium off, you can potentially get uh, problems <coughs> with uh, with cholesterol pearls. Okay, now let's have an adrenaline sponge. So our our canal plasties done. We're convinced all the epithelium's out. Our ossicles are working correctly. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to put this in here to let this sit for just a minute. This is just a cotton ball with 1% 1 with 1 to 100,000. Now uh, let's look at our graph first or skin, whichever you have ready, Charlene. Uh, do you have that? Whichever you have. So we're going to take a look at the skin first. Charlene has that ready for us. We'll put on a cutting, just a Teflon block here. Okay. Now then, let me have pickups, please. Now, this skin, she's just kept this skin in a basin of water. Gimmick, please. Now, one of the things that's helpful, is see this little cartilage edge here? That tells us this is the lateral portion of our skin. We can now open this up. Now, what happens a lot of times, see this, this tethering right here? That's because of the actual... Sometimes some tissue from the annulus gets stuck here. Okay, let's have a knife now, please. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut that first. This little band here. Just help this lay out a little bit better. There we go. Now we can actually take, and I like to actually trim up the edges here. Some people like an 11 blade for this. I just use the 15 blade. That seems to work well for me. And again, it's a matter of you finding out what works best in your hands. Many different ways to skin the cat, as they say, or to do these procedures. Okay, now I actually want to keep this little piece of skin here. Okay, there we go. Now, the other thing I'll do is I'll put a couple little drain holes in it. As you'll see when we put this down, that sometimes that is actually helpful for us. Okay, let's just look at the other side here. Any little pieces of tissue like that I like to take off. Sometimes I'll thin this if it's really thick. That, that looks okay. That looks all right. Okay, skin side is down, Charlene. All right, and there's the top. Okay, let's see now our graph material. So our graft has actually been, Charlene cleaned the graft, and then she put it underneath the light. And here's our graph. You can see how this is nice and thin. Scissors, please. We're going to now trim this. And as we trim it, a little hole up there, but that'll be all right. We're going to put a little slit for the malleus. That should be good. This malleus is a little short, so I don't want a too long of a slit. Okay, that'll look good there. That'll work. Let's trim this little piece of tissue off here. There we go. All right. And I like to, whenever I pass this, I cover it up. That way we know it's not going to fall off. So you can do that with a ray tack or with a cloth like that. Okay, let's have a suction now, please. Suction left, cups and right. Take that, please. Okay, just get this cleaned up here. She looks pretty good. What is this? Ooh, a little pus. Okay, now let's look at what is. Actually, that looks pretty dry. Something's bleeding just a little bit here. Let's see where it's bleeding at. It's running down here, right there. Turn the bovi down to 10, please. The reason I turn this down is if you do, when you do your temporal bone work, look at this. Here's our temporal mastoid squamous line. And right underneath there is where the facial is going to be. Okay, let's see now. Good, there we go. Okay. Now then, let's have gimmick please and now some gel foam and I usually just sit a couple pieces of gel foam in here you don't have to if you don't want to but I think it's helpful you don't really need it like under surface graft you have to really pack that middle ear space full we're just gonna put a piece a couple pieces of gel foam without twice that size Charlene This one underneath there, okay. And the main reason for this is just to help prevent any significant adhesions. Although by not messing with the middle ear mucosa, that should actually prevent any adhesions from really being a problem. See, she's got a pretty deep pocket in the hypotympanic air cell tract. And so again, this does not have to support your graft like you need in a medial surface grafting technique. Okay, that's good, Charlene. And there's actually, there's quite a bit of air space in here that's still open. Okay, now let's have the graft, please. You just wet it with your fingers. 
There's different ways you can get the graft wet. Uh, you can dip it. If I have a real uh, dry graft, uh, I'll do that sometimes. Uh, I like a lot of times just to have the graft dipped uh, with the fingers. Okay, now we're just going to bring the graft in here. One of the things I like to do is just get it down in place, and then what we can do is just lift. The idea is you want this little groove right underneath the malleus here. You have a loop or a gimmick. Okay, we get a gimmick. So we're just going to slide this underneath our malleus here. So the idea is that the groove that we created in here, the purpose of that was to get up around, not See, here's where, the, here's where the cut starts. So the idea is you want to pull this up all the way to the uh, tendon. I'm going to slide this down in here. So well, is that a little too much? Yeah, it is. So we just got to work with it. So we work with it. We're going to slide this stuff forward here. And this front part here, we're actually going to roll this up and over. Okay. So the idea is, is that this will eventually lay down there. Turn the suction down a little bit, please. Let's see here, there we go. Now there's a little bit too much tissue here. So sometimes what we can do is actually slide it up see, between the annulus and the bone here. There's actually a little potential space there. We can take advantage of that. That also helps prevent lateralization. And then this tissue can slide right up on top of that bony crease that I created earlier. There we go. And we can even slide this around a little bit more. So I actually like large pieces of fascia. Everybody's got their own preference of how big they want to make it. I like a little bit bigger pieces and that it comes all the way out here and I think this just helps the epithelialization by having fascia for it to grow on. Okay, so now what we can see is here's our malleus. We've got this up over the annulus here. Let's get that down that to stick down. There we go. And of course, this fascia is all going to thin out over time, too. Let's see. There's skin there, skin there. Perfect. Yeah, so that looks good. Now, make sure that's all the way down onto the annulus there. But you can see it is. Okay, now then, table away, please. Good. Okay, Charlene, let's have the skin now. So you can see here's this little ridge. We've got tissue up on top of the ridge. Like I said, I tucked some of that up underneath. Now that as our skin comes in, when the skin comes in, we want to lay it first. Let's see here. That's, yeah, so we've got to make sure we get the right side in the skin side up. Okay, so we're going to go all the way down. We're going to push this all the way down to the annulus almost. And then we'll start working this. Okay, so here's a little hair. You can see in the cartilage. Okay, so we're just going to kind of keep tucking this into that anterior annulus area. And what does that do? What that does is it helps spread out the skin just to make sure that we get everything uncovered. So we slowly pull out. As we pull out, as soon as we pull something out, we push it back down. So the idea is we want to make sure this all this skin lays out. We're just going to go nice and slow here, slowly pushing down into the annulus. That tissue slowly unfolding. Start to pull it up a little. Pull it up a little. It unfolds. 
see it's starting to tuck under or tuck up into that little groove there. And we slowly unfold. Now, sometimes you don't have enough skin to cover everything. And if that's the case, and sometimes we actually have to go and take a little skin graft from behind the ear. Okay, so there it is sitting right down on top of our, of our fascia here. Okay, so hopefully, let's see if we're yeah, on the screen there, you can appreciate that. Now see, here's a little bit where it's still not completely opened up. And see how it's just right on top of, this, of the fascia there. That's exactly what we want it to look like. That looks beautiful. Let's see, this can pull up here a little bit. Okay. And in front here, let's just see here. So we'll make sure that's just right down. Yeah, right down on top, which is just where we want it to be. Okay, there's a little air behind there, so we want to get that out. Perfect. Okay. Oh, I moved it just a bit. Just pull this back down. Just again, uncurling. Want to make sure that there's no skin that's curled up inside. Want it all laying flat down. And that's the reason to cut the edges. Let's make sure that happens. So there we go. Yeah, so that looks good. Over on the screen, I think. Yeah, good. Okay. Now we're going to come back just a little bit. Okay, Charlene, you have a first piece? So the first piece is just a piece of dry gel foam, kind of like a little cigarette roll. And we can actually come right in here with that. Do you have another piece about the same size? Okay. You can actually just push this right down in there. Now, when you pack this, packing is a little bit different than doing a packing for the undersurface grafting technique. So when you pack a lateral surface graft, the idea, gimmick please. The idea is that you want to actually pack this. There we go. Okay, now let's have gel foam, please. We want to pack laterally. We don't want to pack medially. So with medial surface, you're trying to pack medially to hold everything in place. Here we're actually packing uh, half that size, please. Is the nitrous off? Yes. We got a little bubble there we got to take care of in just a minute. Before we do that, let's just get a couple pieces down inside here. So what we want to do is we're just trying to cover the skin. Again, just trying to cover the skin. Get the skin. The, one, this, the key is the skin is going to hold everything in place. So if we get the skin to stay in position, that is going to keep our graft in position. Now the graft is also going to stay in position because we've got it hooked up underneath the malleus. Let's just get that air out of here. There it goes. You can see I just lifted up the graft. Now I'll put a couple on over the graft here, over the malleus first. Another one over the whole graph, but again, we're not trying to push in fairly. Okay. Okay, Charlene, we'll take some bigger pieces now. Actually, just pushing medially. Now, hopefully, yesterday was a good day for you drilling some. Okay, another piece. Now, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to try to keep the vascular strip area free. So again, we're just pushing laterally here. So vascular strip will lay right down in here. Okay. And this will re-epithelialize, so I'm not concerned about that. Okay, Charlene, uh-huh. Okay, you got a real big piece now. 
Now, we're going to put this piece. This is just to keep the blood from coming out. So just lay this on top of our fascia and fold it over. The idea being is I'm going to take this piece out in just a minute. So I'll show you how we do that. So let's have the pickups, please. So first we're just going to pull down on our vascular strip. Let's see here. Let me lengthen it just a bit. Scissors, please. Uh, Tenotomies. Okay, so one of the things we can do here is actually the soft tissue up. going to take this vascular strip, push it up and out the meatus here. Now then, let's have a stitch please. So you can put this stitch in, which will hold this in place. See if we can do our triple play here. There we go. Okay, so this will hold all of that in place. Cut, please. Now, table towards me, please. Nasal speculum. Relax, Charlene. That's good. Okay, now you can see. Let's have suction, please. You can see there's our vascular strip right there. Let's just get this blood out of the way white, please. Now we can pull the vascular strip back. Okay, there's our bone. Let's have cups, please. So take this out. Now then, there in lies our fascia. Let's see if we can get a little, I'll get you a little closer picture. Okay, so here's our fascia, right here. Here's down by the annulus. Now we can actually take this, well, let's take this one out too. These two out. We now take the vascular strip and lay it down here. The significance of this is now, let's see here. This will lay down flat on top of our fascia. Okay. And so that's right top on top of the fascia there. And we know because of that that we don't have to worry, gel foam please, about anything, uh, about any pieces of skin being unhooked or underneath there. Okay. Now at this point in time, we can. Uh, we're just going to pack the rest of this and close behind the ear canal, so I'll let you get back into your drilling. And uh, I guess we can turn the TV off at this time. I'm going to ask questions at this time, but unfortunately we can't do that. So We're just going to pack the rest of this up. take the headset off now. No. Yep, okay. we're just going to close behind the ear. So thank you very much. We'll see you later. Hello, my name is Dr. Kevin Peng, neurotologist here at the House Institute. Thank you for watching this video. The House Institute provides free educational videos for hearing health professionals worldwide. To help support videos like these and other educational efforts, please consider donating by clicking the link in the description box below. Your generous support allows us to keep videos like these at no cost for you and others. Thank you.